Now, if we wanted to, we could even change that soft glow now from screen to oh, to overlay. That gives a, a bit of a different different look. Maybe take the opacity down on that a little bit. Take it to fifty percent. There we go. And we'll probably come back and tweak that in a little bit. But the next thing we want to do is I want to, um, I've called this 80s trash. And the reason for that is I want to put, add a bit of, uh, I mean, the 80s are back in a, in a big way, uh, for better or worse. So what I want to do is add a nice bit of uh, neon or actually chromatic aberration onto our, and onto our camera here. So let's just duplicate our soft glow layer up here. Instead of soft glow, I'm going to call this, uh, um, call this prism. Take off my directional blur, so just delete that. And I'm going to add another filter. And this filter is under the blur again, and it's prism. Let's turn our blend mode to normal here so we can see what this is doing a bit better. Turn my prism on. And you can see it's just separating out the, uh, the color channels there. Lovely. I just swap my angle up there a little bit. And you can also see that it's because it's separating out the different channels, we're getting a bit of um, gap down at the bottom there. So I'm just going to come into the properties of the whole layer, just scale the layer up a little bit. And now when we dump this into uh, into screen mode, not only have we got the little prism effect here, but because we've scaled up the image, it's sort of spilling out a little bit more. And of course, we've still got the same image mask going from our radial gradient that we use with the uh, with the Mocha Tracker. Now, of course, there's other ways of using that that data. So if we take a look at, uh, at the prism here and look at the filters here. We've got an angle. Now, when we took out the uh, the tracking data for Mocha, we also took out not just position data. Let's come into our eye track here, F5 and F6 to bring up our keyframe editor again. Not only did we get position data, we also got rotation and ooh, not shear. We also got scale as well. Uh, so let's take the uh, the rotation data because uh, at the moment we've got that little um, prism effect, but it's looking slightly dead because the angle doesn't change at all. So let's just take that rotation data, copy that, come into prism filter here. And again, we're just going to add a, uh, a keyframe to our angle here so we can actually see it in the keyframe editor. Turn this to animated. Come to our front here and just paste in those keyframes. So now you'll see we've got our angle changing very, very slightly as it goes through. But the problem is it's overwritten our original value. So we haven't kept the same effect that we, uh, we were after before. Now, again, there's a few different ways we can, we can change this up. Um, of course, if you're used to working with motion, you're used to working with behaviors. And the good thing about behaviors is they're, they're a nice simple way of, um, of reducing the reliance on keyframes. So I'm going to come to the parameter and come to the custom here. And I'm going to come to add filters, prism and angle. And now if I use this slider here, what this is doing is offsetting the, um, the angle data that I had before. So we've got the rotation of the, let's have a look in here. So we've got the rotation we've already used, but what it's doing is using this behavior is it's now offsetting this by this number. So it's adding this number to our our rotation keyframes. So using this custom parameter here, we can easily offset uh, any of the, the tracking data that we uh, that we actually want to use. Um, just as a, a quick aside, this isn't going to look particularly fantastic, but let's uh, just show you this. Uh, take my little uh, layer here, call it tracked. I'll show you, show you just how we can use behaviors to, to take that tracking data information as well. Let's come into my behaviors, come to my parameters, go to track. 
And over here, I can select my, my source layer, so where I'm going to get my information from. And that will, of course, be my eye track. So I just drag that in there and attach that to the source. Apply that tracking data to uh, my position of this property. And you'll see it now tracks along quite handily with that. But of course, if I didn't want it there, I wanted it over here somewhere, I can just quickly add another behavior uh, under parameter, add my custom, go to properties, transform, all here. And let's just uh, transform this over the side somewhere. Bring it down there. Oops. So now you can see it's taken on the same movement. Let's just play that back. It's taken on the same movement but we've just offset it by a certain amount, just using a couple of, uh, couple of quick behaviors there. Cool, but that's not what we want to do with this particular shot, so I'm just gonna get rid of that. So really, the final thing that I want to do on this is if you have a look, we've got some fantastic uh, film grain going on in the original image, but because we blurred everything else up, let's see, Bring that back to 100%. Ooh, it's a bit harsh. Let's take that not quite to 100% then, to 85. Oh, that's garish, I love it. Oh, look at that. Um, yeah, because we blurred everything up, we, we're losing some of, this, um, some of this sort of film grain. So here's a very, very quick technique to, to bring it back again. Uh, let's come into our library, come into our generators, and let's just generate up a color solid. Bring it over the top. Come in here, gonna set that to 50% gray. And that's gonna be important. Uh, come to our filters, stylize, add noise. And let's take this to a uh, Gaussian noise. And set the entire color solid layer. Take that blend mode to overlay. Now what this has done is it's taken out anything that's, that's sort of 50% gray it's applied a um, uh, basically a multiply blend mode to anything that's that's uh, darker than 50% gray and a screen to anything that's more than 50% gray. So it gives us actually a really nice, uh, nice sort of grain effect there. Now the problem is, of course, again, we're adding grain over everything. So we're adding grain over image that's already got grain on it. So how do we sort that out? Well, we use our old friend, the image mask and the rad same radial gradient as we've done before. Come back in here, set that to luminance, invert our mask there. Cool, and now we can come into our, our noise and just take that down to where we need it. We actually only need a very small amount of noise just to make it, give it a bit of life. Just for the sake of argument here, I'm just gonna put it to point, point 0.11. So we take a look at our uh, just our original. Let's put this in a, in a layer all of its own. So let's just dump everything else into a group here, turn that group off. So there's our original. And there's our garish 80s prism thing. In fact, I can probably take the prism down a little bit. 32 is a bit harsh. So that's 15. Cool, for the moment, I'm, I'm happy with that. We could, of course, come in and change it. I'm just gonna save that there. So Apple S, come straight back into Final Cut. I don't have to do anything else. I mean, this updates uh, automatically. Now, of course, it's red, which means it will have to be rendered. So let's just uh, quickly render that out. There we go, and then let's just, uh, just play that back. So I think it's really important to see just how you can use that uh, Mocha for Final Cut tracking data in Apple Motion instead of trying to have to do uh, to everything in Final Cut instead. So either by copying and pasting keyframes or using the, the behaviors, we can, we can really get the most out of that, that uh, great tracking data. And because all of the, the Final Cut Studio applications talk so closely to each other, 
we want to make any sort of changes within our clip in Final Cut, all we have to do is just right click, send that back into Motion or open it up in the editor and uh, we can make any, any changes we want to. Cool, so that's it for this little tutorial. I hope it's been useful for you and I'll see you next time.